Why don't we start by introducing yourselves and the character you're playing, a little bit about the character, and we'll go ladies first. Hi, my name is Ellen Janders, and I'm going to be playing Rose Alvarez, and I am Albert Peterson's secretary in the show. And I'm Scott Buss, and I'm playing Albert, and uh, Albert is Conrad Birdie's agent, so the Elvis guy, um, the big superstar, and I'm uh, balancing my career with him, my relationship with my mother, and my relationship with her all at the same time, and they're all conflicting. Uh -huh. Okay, um, well, uh, a little bit about the show. This show is sort of based on Elvis Presley's mm -hmm. in, yes. um, drafting to the Army in 1957, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, um, how, uh, that's probably a lot different than that, really, because it's mm -hmm. musical, whatever, but tell me what similarities and differences, I guess, yeah. are there. And... Inter well, interesting, because our director talked about it. Um, so the the ploy, you know, because because Elvis was seen as this sexual icon, and so to kind of in the fifties was a huge, you know, he was kind of the first guy. You know, the Beatles would come right after him, and the nineteen late nineteen fifties was a very uh, a, po a point of transition in American history. An awakening, and, yeah. sort of. So um, <sighs> my brain left me. Um, <laughs> and so they put him in the army. To it was it was kind of like a an ad like a like a. Uh, a ploy to get people, everyone to accept him, because you know the teenagers really liked Elvis, but the adults didn't like Elvis because of what he represented. Mm -hmm. And so, if but if he joined the army, then everyone could find like you know everyone loves a military man, a man in uniform who serves his country, and it's I mean, and he did, and so that's kind of a, a poignant note to the story that I think is really interesting. And there's also the split of the adults versus the kids, mm -hmm. and that's that's a major part of this show too is um, the adults trying to hold on to their children being children as long as they can and all the kids in the show having this this awakening uh -huh. which is orchestrated by Conrad Birdie yeah. and so that's what creates a lot of the conflict and new thoughts new feelings I think it's funny how the adults there's moments where the adults act like kids and the kids act like adults I think that's, mm -hmm. I just think that's always funny in shows um, and this, this musical is a pretty big musical I mean it's uh, tell me about I guess as far as the musical's history goes, mm -hmm. why what made it such a big? Was it because when it came out, what it was about, or what, or the music in it, or what made it? I guess. I I think it's well. So Charles Strauss wrote it, um, and Lee Adams did the lyrics for it. And Charles Strauss, you you know you know what Charles Strauss. He wrote Annie. Um, he wrote tons of shows. He wrote the theme song to All in the Family. If you know that <laughs> show, um, so <laughs> he he's known for writing super catchy songs and this is an example every song in this is singable our castmates are singing them backstage yeah. after the show after we do a run um and so you, you said history and so some so yeah so why it was important i mean i i think that having dick van dyke and cheetah rivera are two they're two huge um names and two huge stars of the time period and i think it was really written for them the parts were catered they for were, them the, the show was written for them and and it, sh it shows but it's but it um but it's such a great story and the music is so classic and we were just saying you you hear songs that you don't realize you wouldn't remember show. that they're from bye bye birdie like the example put on a happy face you you wouldn't a lot of people wouldn't remember or even know that that's from bye bye birdie yeah. and so yeah. it's it's kind of this fun musical journey through the show too because there's going to be that recognition from i think a bunch of age groups and stuff like that which is why it's going to be great for the whole family mm -hmm. because going through the show parents are going to recognize all these great songs and even the kids and it's mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of fun and the, the writing of the show is something that you do. It's a really well-written show. It's a smart, um, and you don't always show. get, you don't get that very often. I think that's the, one of the strongest points of the show, having the, 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 the creative team as tight as they were. And that even the humor carries over remarkably well into today's culture. Uh -huh. And it's, it, it's really strong. It's a strong book. Uh, my understanding is that uh, the, the character of your your character's mother uh -huh. is kind of racist, I guess, and this is, and this kind of you know coming off West Side Story, which was you know, yeah, a little bit of a race issue, Racially and charged. this yeah, mm -hmm. and this has a race issue. I mean, I guess talk about that in this show and how it's done and portrayed. And it's... Uh -huh. Well, there was only a, a, a four year span between uh -huh. the writing of the, not the writing, but um, creation the creation of the two shows, and so. Um, it is definitely still an issue that's addressed in this show, I think. Um, and, and well, and it's just funny because, you know, the character of Rosie is, isn't, she's, she's American. She's, she was born in America. She's <laughs> from Pennsylvania. And it says that in the show. But, and so it's just, it's, I think it's really smart to 
because May starts off, the mom starts off, you know, it's playfully racist, if that makes any sense. <laughs> you know, it's just like, okay, it's like, you know, it's like, you're my mother, it reminds me of my mother, and then, <laughs> don't let her see this, and then, um, <laughs> And then it, but then it escalates it, but it, it serves the story in the way that it does it. It's not, and it's not, that's not the message it's telling, but it's, it, it really, um, it's, it uses it in a that smart way. That she's seeing me as this shell of a person based on yeah. who, where she thinks I come from. And yeah. it's, it's and almost, plays with it's it. almost laughable because I, I'm just, at the end, I'm just accepting it yeah. and saying, okay, you know what, I'll... If you yeah. want to see me that way, that's great. But it this is, is the person yeah. I am, and I'm making yeah. your son happy. It's not a show about race, but it is a definite. It's, 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 a, a point. it's an interesting part about it, and I think that is interesting that it is coming off of West Side. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was trying to figure out what to talk about. Then I realized that they were close in proximity. Yeah. They both mm -hmm. had some race issue, and yeah. But you mentioned it's, the show itself is not about race. What is the show? Is it about, about love? Is it what's what's it about? For me, I think it's um, I think it's about growing up because I, I think the, the kids the kids are at this really power like they're all you know 15 16 this like cusp of adulthood they're all they're going like puberty is mentioned more than once in this show and it's it's about um it's about get, growing up it's about your relationship with your family it's about what you and for albert for me it's about what you know i'm, I'm 33 where do i want my life focused to be do i want it to be on my career do i want it to be on my family do i want it to be on my or on my new family and so it's and you can't you have to sacrifice something to get one of them you can't get all of them at least in this situation mm -hmm. so i think yeah it's just about making the hard choices that you have to make when you grow up and i think that the persistence of love and the stubbornness at the same time how um in the end you if you're working out a relationship with someone you, you there is a certain degree of acceptance and i think acceptance is a big part of this show too and just staying true to yourself and mm -hmm. Um, seeing the other person for who they are, remembering why you fell in love in the first place, yeah. um, working through working through conflict, honestly. Yeah, and and because all the characters love each other and care about each other in the show, otherwise the show wouldn't. Everyone would just leave and nothing would happen. Mm -hmm. And so if I did, if Rosie didn't love me, she wouldn't do all she's doing. If my mother didn't love me, she wouldn't do all that she's doing. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't do it. You know, yeah. if, the, if the parents didn't love the kids. So I think it's really, I think that's just the biggest part about it. There's a lot of just really interesting relationships in this show. A lot of conflicting relationships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <my> side, yeah. <laughs> a little web. My web of relationships. I <laughs> uh, want to talk a little bit more about the music. You kind of mentioned it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, is it more kind of, you know, because it is sort of about Elvis, is it more rock? Is it more... Mm -hmm. what Stylistically, it's very true to the 1950s sound. There's... Um, I mean, Conrad's songs are, it's, it's the rock and roll style, uh -huh. and, um, but the evolution of rock and roll stylistically, if it makes any sense, is also reflected in the show. Because we're setting um, it a little bit, it's, it's not, it's a little bit later, late it's 50s. late, like 58, 59, so just right before the Beatles come to America and, and all that new wave of stuff. Mm. And you can see that in the teenagers, you know, they're kind of wanting that and the adults. And then Mike Albert, um, a lot of my music is based in the 40s because that's when I, you know, that's when I would have been, my character would have been alive and, and a lot of my golden age, all my songs are pretty golden agey, um, whereas Conrad's songs are pretty pure in the in the 50s style and so I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of iconic points set yeah. that you can hear very clearly. Yeah, because then when the kids sing it's a little more, ja it's jazzier and then Conrad's rocky, yeah, and it's, yeah it's, it's really interesting. Okay. Um, and obviously you, you guys have a love relationship in there, but there's another relationship right between, um, I can't remember the characters, I'm spacing, there's two, Conrad another, and Kim? Maybe that's, Kim or, or didn't Kim Hugo have Hugo and Kim? Yeah, Hugo maybe and Kim. Yes. Teenagers, yeah. Yes. That's a really interesting point, I think that's funny because, um, you know, there's a song called One Boy, and so, and it's, it's talking about how all you need is this one boy, but the, but the, 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 the women of Sweet Apple, Ohio, aren't getting what they really want from the men, like, they're, you know, they're they're all very they're treated well, but there's just something missing. And then Conrad shows up, and they all go nuts over and Conrad. It releases what was suppressed yeah. in them. And, and so and and so the men have to kind of ride, meet the challenge of this, you know, rock star, superstar, that superstar. That is bombarding their yeah. town. And I think that, that's one of my favorite conflicts is what all, what, <laughs> the, how that men react to Conrad and when the, he shows the, up. The relationship between Hugo and Kim mm -hmm. directly mirrors the relationship between Rosie and Albert, mm -hmm. and that's that mirroring is reflected even in um, the way the show is executed and it's it's interesting to see that in life and relationships the adults can uh -huh. learn a lot from the kids and something that's been present for a while 
can learn from something that has a lot of the newness and the excitement uh -huh. of a new relationship. And so it's just like, like I said, remembering why you fell in love in the first place and the newness of a relationship that you want to last. Okay. Um, I, I believe Tony's directing this uh -huh. this time, yes. right? So after the first two shows with Scott, uh -huh. what does Tony bring, I guess, not different to the, the wagon wheel for this summer, for this, and specifically for this show, for you guys, and is it kind of nice to have a change in the kind it's, of- It's very nice to have a change, because that's, it's, we get, as actors, we get lazy, you know, we get comfortable, and then we, know, we might not be doing the best work if we're, if we're comfortable in it. And so he definitely pushes us in new ways. Um, this is my second time working with Tony. I was here last year in Gypsy. I didn't have a huge part in that, but I got to be in the room with him. And um, he's just very, Scott and Tony are very detail-oriented. But Scott's a Scott is a choreographer, for, uh, not first, but he's a, he's a, he comes from. They both have very different backgrounds, and so Scott looks and sees really beautiful pictures, and Tony does too. But the way we get to those pictures are a little different, and 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 Tony is very, especially with musical comedies, which is Tony did this, has done this very well. Um, you kind of almost have to choreograph it in a weird way. It is, it's very specific. All the bit in any comedy, it has to be very specific, and in a show that moves like this, um, he yeah, we've been. He's very specific. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, he's so smart in the way that he he has this beautiful vision, and it's it's kind of once you're once you're on the right track and once you're doing the show with the blocking he's given mm -hmm. you, and you kind of have that aha moment of oh, this is why we're doing it this way because it just it's it's so it's a well-oiled machine. It's mm -hmm. really he's so smart and it's it's wonderful yeah. working with him. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about yourselves. I know okay. you said you were here last mm -hmm. year. Is this your first season? This is my first full summer season with the okay. Wagon Wheel. I was here um, last year for the post show Rent and um, A Christmas Story. So okay. Which character were you in Rent? In Rent, I was Maureen. Yes. And, okay. <laughs> and in Christmas Story, I was uh, Miss Shields, the teacher. Okay. So. And then you were here all last summer? Yeah, I was here. Um, I, had a very, I was very fortunate last summer. I was uh, Mary Poppins. I was Mr. Banks and Mary Poppins. And then I was in Catch Me If You Can. I had a mustache then. And, uh, <laughs> it's was, a mustache that threw me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a mustache. And I had hair back then, um, <laughs> a year ago. And then, um, yeah, I had the whole season, and it was great. And, and yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, what, what do you guys like about performing here at the Wagon Wheel? Um, I love, I love being in the round, and I love the support of the of the community. I, I've, I've not only it's it's rare to fill out a house, especially like an 850 seat house almost every night, and so I think that's just incredible. Um, and I'm from, I'm from California, and they don't even do that there. So, and and I'm, I'm biased towards California. <laughs> um, so it's very it's very great to see that in a community like this, and I, and I love it, and I love coming back to it. And with, with me, it's just when you, once you get to work with a director who you just, you gel and you click with so well, I, I was just so excited to be working with Scott again, and now Tony, I love working with him. It's, it's a blessing to get to work with such a great director uh -huh. again and again and like the round space is, uh -huh. it's so as an actor it's it's a it's a big blessing because you you don't get to work in a space as cool yeah. as this um a lot in your career and just the team the creative team um visually it's such a stunning what they can do with this space is beautiful and all the shows they turn out i, I i'm just excited to be back here and how long are you you guys here all season or how long yes. you get to up until Avenue Q, so up until the Encore show. But mm -hmm. we're here for the entire regular we're here through season. Little Women. Okay. August twenty second. <laughs> okay. Um and last question. Anything else about this show you'd want audiences to know or or yourselves or come ready to laugh, come ready to um come with an open mind. I would say and these are the words of Tony, not me, so I'm not that I'm not this smart. But he, I, I think come and, and be able to appreciate uh, a masterpiece of musical theater. And like he says, this is our Shakespeare. This is our American heritage. And I think that's uh, really reflected in this show and, and our production of this show. And so I hope people can come out and take that in. Cool.